welcome wrestling fans and entertainment fans alike, just like me, fellow nerds, if you will. My name is Joe White. Excuse me if you hear me adjusting the uh, microphone a lot on this episode. It's because I'm, I'm using a brand new headset and I'm just still trying to get used to it. Um, <clears throat> I, I had a show recorded for this week. I really, I really did. And I was going to try to come back and be all grandiose with a return. But something happened. Something, uh, something went down where I, I, I was reading Twitter and I don't get on Twitter that much <laughs> because I don't want to sound like those people who, you know, I don't want to sound like those people, folks, who get on here and bitch about social media and how this person said this that pissed me off, but something happened on March the 11th that really pissed me off. And if you're watching the video version of this on YouTube, I'm going to put the tweet, the actual tweet that pissed me off here in a moment on the screen. Somebody on Twitter goes by the name of at Keelan81, Keelan81. I'll post it. You'll be able to see her name. It's a, it's a, it's a woman. Posted, you know, anything The Miz can do, Damien Sandow does better, and put hashtag Royal Rumble 2015. To which I replied... If only they would use him more. Talking about Sandow. And she goes, exactly. And I was like, but no, we get an out-of-touch 70-year-old millionaire on our screens instead of good wrestling. Which is true. It's true. And she goes, I don't mind Vince being on my TV at all. Hashtag Vince is my God. So I... (laughs) immediately type back if he was a god then he'd give his followers what he wants (laughs) it's true he doesn't give a damn what we think he doesn't give a damn what we like or what we want and she goes well you can't please everyone no but he doesn't even try is what i replied vince doesn't he doesn't even try he doesn't want to try he doesn't have to try quite frankly for those of us who bitch at vince so much he, he does not really have to try. I want him to try. I want him to make an effort. It's his business. It's like me being a farmer and going... Or, or not even a farmer. Let me say... Let's say I sell video games for a living. And I pump out a good video game. Good, you know, classic platformer. And that does well. So I put out a sequel. And then I put out another sequel. And then all of a sudden I was like... I'm not going to give you fans what you want. I'm not going to give you a sequel to that game. I'm going to go over here and move into first-person shooters, which I know nothing about. And I'm going to give you a, a first-person shooter, and that first-person shooter is crap. People are going to look at me and go, Joe, you didn't even do your research. You didn't even try. You didn't even figure out what your fans wanted. You didn't bother to take a, you know, a, a focus group to see what your fans want. Now, I know everybody's like, they they do online surveys, Joe, but online surveys me dick. You might as well take the results and just throw them away. So she goes, like I said, can't please everyone, yet there's millions upon millions loving it and watching it. Don't like it, don't watch. Which is a good point. That's why people like Jeff Edwards does not watch from Blading for Truth does not watch the product. It's a reason why I make an attempt to watch the product, and if within the first hour I don't like what I see, I turn the I go to turn it on in my bedroom and I fall asleep to the rest of it every Monday night. I'm not watching. People are not watching. People are turning the dial to something else on Monday nights. Supergirl is on Monday night. I'd rather... Some weeks, I wish Sons of Anarchy are back, man. Because because there was a point there when Sons of Anarchy was going on where Monday nights I'd be sitting at Raw or watching Raw going, God, is it Teller Tuesday yet? We are in a golden age of television, folks. We are smack dab in the middle of it. You got shows like The Walking Dead out there who are doing mad numbers, although I don't know why because I hate that show. Um, you got shows like Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow, The Flash, The 100, The Walking Dead, uh, 
you know, Supergirl. There's a ton of shows out there, you know, that people watch out there. And I just name superhero shows because that's the shows that I like. But there's, you know, there's a the 100 is not a superhero show, but you get my drift. So I type back, there are millions that are not watching anymore. There was tons of truth to Shane McMahon's promo when he returned. And there was. I know it was written. Part of it was written because he forgot one of his lines and Vince had to step in. But there is truth to what he was said. He's out of touch with his fans. He's out of touch with his business. He's out of touch with the wrestling business and the sports entertainment business as a whole. And she types back one thing. And that's the theme of this broadcast. Are we owed? She goes, so to the ones not watching, it's on them. WWE does not need them. Simple as that. She goes, it's nothing but bitch ass fans who think they are owed. Bitch ass fans who think we are owed. Is that is that what the common WWE the the uh, the casual fan thinks? I, I'm not a millennial. I don't live in a stage of entitlement. I don't think I'm owed shit. But but when I give you my money each and every week, and when I watch your product, when I watch your show, yes, I pay my cable provider to watch your show. Some of that money goes to Vince. Vince, The USA pays Vince to watch that that show. Where do you think that... Or to put on Raw. Where do you think that money comes from, boys and girls? Ladies and gents? That money comes from, you know, USA Network. Well, where does USA Network get it? From ad revenue. Because people watch their network. If you don't watch, they don't have a reason for sponsors to come on there and latch on. They don't have a reason, you know, to give Vince a lot of ton of money to come back on USA Network week after week. Now, granted, they've signed a contract with him and they have to. But what happens when that contract comes up for renewal? What's the first thing they look at is the numbers. The viewership numbers. The sponsorship numbers. What sponsors are watching. What sponsors are willing to give them ad revenue so they can in turn give off a chunk of that to Vince McMahon. To put on Raw every week. To put on SmackDown every Thursday. To put on any other number of shows. That AM Raw show is still on the air for crying out loud. If you can find it at 2.30 AM on a Saturday. So I put back, and this is the way I feel. We are owed. The WWE fans. The pro wrestling fans in general are owed. We are owed a damn good product. We are owed storylines that do not insult our intelligence. We are owed good wrestling. We are owed wrestling to a point where we don't want to see our workers get injured every week. And yes, workers, I'm talking to you as a fan. We are owed. We want to see you week after week. We want to see you. We are owed smart wrestling, smart working as it were. We are owed a match where you don't have to take 15 bumps on your neck to get over and risk crushing your neck, your vertebrae, your head, your getting concussions. We are owed smart working by you because we want to plunk down our money week after week after week to see you. We appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to learn this craft, this beautiful art that is pro wrestling. But we're owed. I hate saying the fact that we are owed because it makes me sound like a damn millennial. But then again, people are going, well, Joe, you ain't never been in a ring before. How do you figure you're owed? It's the simple fact that I have a job. I work hard for my money. And there's a lot of things I could do with my money in this world, but no. I choose to take $10, $15, $20, $30, $40, $50, $60, $70, $80, $90, $100, $200, $300, $400, $500, $600, $700, $800, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000,
fifteen dollars. I'm going to an NXT show next month, so a hundred dollars for five people. And I choose to take that hard money and I choose to watch you men and women who are awesome enough, brave enough, stronger than hell, strong, way stronger than I am, to go through that training. I, 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 I'm, I'm willing to plunk down my money to watch you guys do what you love to do. And by taking my money, you owe it to me to put on a good product. Vince McMahon owes it to us to put on a good product. He's taking your money. That $9.99 he gets from you for that WWE Network. He's biting the hand that feeds every single week. And it's getting to the point where unless they do something soon. Unless they shake things up. Unless they step in and say, unless the shareholders step in, the board of directors from WWE, granted, half those people on that board of directors probably do not know dick all about the wrestling business. They've probably never been to a live event. Except maybe WrestleMania. And they're too worried about hitting the after party afterward to worry about putting on a good show. So, But we are owed. We're owed good matches, good storytelling, logical storytelling. We are not owed suffering succotash and poopy pants jokes. These kids out here today, I have two teenagers. They think wrestling is a joke. They watch it, and they like it. They like NXT. They love it. My son, my six-year-old son, would rather watch NXT than Raw most weeks. Because NXT, on most weeks, gives you good wrestling, smart working, and they, they give you storylines that just do not spit in your face and insult your intelligence. Now, there are cases out there where the working in NXT is not always smart. Hence, Asuka kicking the shit out of Emma. And shit like that needs to be addressed. Yes, you could go a little bit stiff. I'm not telling you that you you should not work strong style. But I'm telling you, you don't have to go out there and kick someone's face off. Just because you want to hear that crowd go, ooh, ah. No, what we're really going is, ugh, did you really have to be that stiff? You know, what if what if Emma had sustained a major injury? Now it's like, okay, we're without seeing Emma for a few weeks. There are fans out there who are pissed off, or who may be pissed off because they Emma's their favorite, and they don't get to see Emma week after week because of an injury, because of stupid work, and just work smart is all I ask, guys. Not every match has to be a car crash. Not every match has to be so stiff. I said this before in another video up on my channel. It's It used to be the art of the work, which was making it look real. Making it look like you're kicking someone's face off when you're really not. <laughs> Bret Hart, the excellence, was not called the excellence of execution for nothing. He could make it look real and still have soft hands soft feet and not really hurt anybody then he got kicked in the head by Bill Goldberg which further illustrates my point now granted on the indie scene you have people like Evolve and ROH and everything that work that style but here's the thing about Ring of Honor you don't hear after every Ring of Honor event a laundry list of injuries like you have been with WWE lately We are owed good, smart, intelligent work. I, w I was told once that, you know, you plunk down your money so you have every right to an opinion. If you get comped into a wrestling show, you have no right to say anything. It's just like with the politics thing going around. 
If you don't vote, you don't have any right to bitch. If you don't plunk down that money, you don't have any right to bitch. If you're just one of these sheep, and that's what you are, those who sit there and go, bitch-ass fans who think they're owed, you're a sheep with no brain and no sense of how the business works. Now, I'm not in the business, but I got a pretty good idea about of, from watching it since 1991 when I was six years old about how this business kind of works and how you can give people what they want without killing yourself at the same time and without insulting their intelligence we are owed Vince McMahon we are owed we are owed a good product we want our pro wrestling back it doesn't have to be Ring of Honor style every week because quite frankly, I'm glad we got a mixture of programs on our TV like Lucha Underground and Ring of Honor and various independents. Because if it was the same shit like Ring of Honor, that Smash Mouth style week after week after week, I'd get bored. New Japan. New Japan is a damn good promotion. It's probably the number one wrestling promotion in the world. But if all we had was New Japan... And that's the only style in this business that there was to work? A, people would be getting injured left and right and there really wouldn't be much of a roster to speak of and B, people would get bored with it. I get bored with New Japan sometimes. Because it's like, okay, here comes Okada. We're going to see a drop kick and a pose where he sticks his arm out and the camera zooms out. We're going to see the Rainmaker clothesline and all that good stuff. I mean, it's... It's Okada. You're, you're going to get damn good wrestling. It's not a knock on Okada, but you know what you're getting when he comes out there. Which is why I have such a, a big hatred for John Cena's style, because it's the same old shit. But my point of this is, is that you have to have some sort of variety yeah, out there. So yeah, we're owed that variety. We're owed. We're owed. You plunk down your money each and every week to watch that show. You're owed. Do you think I'm warranted in this? Let me know in the comments below. Are we owed good wrestling? Are we owed smart working? Are we owed good storylines that do not insult our intelligence? Or should we just take what they feed us and shut the hell up and just say, "Here, take my money." Now I'll sit over here like a like a uh, <laughs> like a uh, what do they call them things mime, like a mime. I won't say anything. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, I'm gonna talk a little bit about crowds. A little bit about crowds and the way they chant. We're going to talk a little bit about Batman vs. Superman. We're going to talk a little bit about video games this week. Including the Nintendo NX. That's coming out. That's right. Nintendo is coming out with another console, guys. This year. Only three years after the Wii U launched. So we're going to talk a whole bunch of other stuff. But let me know in the comments below. Are you owed? Are we owed? I think we're owed. Do you think we're owed anything from this business as fans? You're listening to New Search Live. Check us out on YouTube. YouTube.com slash tons of fun WWE. Hopefully maybe on 1640 PWPR coming up very soon. I was on uh, Jeff Edwards Blading for Truth this past week. Check that out over there. On the uh, 1640 Spreaker page, if you go to Spreaker.com, just search for 1640 PWPR, you'll find it. We'll be right back, folks. Stay with us. The fact is, you'd be working for me. He was a simple man who only wanted to do one thing in life. I wouldn't be in your shoes if the sweet Lord Jesus come down and asked me himself. Drive the champ. Tell him like it is, girls! Who's the damnedest man there 
but your entire life. Get my limousine right on 85. I'm trying to drive you to the stove. I'm going to ease across the street to the high regency and drinks. All the champagne, anything you want, is on the world check. Well, I'll help you to the door. Now, ain't just some back of the net you look at while you're going wherever you got to go. I'm a man. But to be the man, you got to beat the man, and I'm saying, woo! Dan Aykroyd, Morgan Freeman, and the nature boy Ric Flair in... WWE Films presents Driving the Champ. This film is not yet rated, coming out 2016 in a theater near you. Welcome back. You're listening to New Surge Live this week. And hopefully this is many weeks to come. I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, Batman vs. Superman. It's coming out next week, folks. It is here. I was watching the animated version of The Dark Knight Returns, which is kind of what this uh kind of what this whole thing is based off of. There's there's elements of it in there. Now, granted the animated version is way different probably than the comic book. I I haven't read Frank Miller's epic as they call it. Um If you have Comcast cable, um it's on their on-demand section for free this month. Parts 1 and 2. And we see the the introduction of the female Robin character, which we have been told is not in this movie. In fact, the actress, I forget her name, it's so irrelevant. The actress who was rumored to be either Barbara Gordon or or the uh, female Robin character is gotten cut out of the movie she'll be in the director's cut which is going to be the rated r blu-ray version that's going to be coming out but batman and superman the fight in this movie that they show is very minimal and it's not really even batman that takes them out it's green arrow with a kryptonite arrow that ends up taking out kind of superman and being the nail in the coffin my biggest fear with this is that they don't go that is that they're going to go that route. And I hope they don't. So here's what I want to see out of this movie. I want to see the movie's 2 hours and 30 minutes long. For 3 acts, you divide, let's see here. Let's go ahead and add this up here. Let me get my calculator here out on the keyboard here. A lot of people are going, Joe, it's basic math. So you have 2 hours, 2.33, roughly. You divide that by 3 acts, and you have 77 minutes. Roughly. So let's see here. Let me see. Let me just make sure I got this right here. If you do 77 times 3, you get 231. Divide that by 60. It's roughly three hours, so that ain't right. But any, anyway, <laughs> Joe can't do math, folks. Anyway, not in my head. Two hours and 30 minutes, so at least you have... Uh, an hour and 15 minutes to do two acts. You divide that up further, and you could do the math at home. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and stress this, but what I'm saying is... For the first two acts of this movie... The first act should be setting up Batman and where he's been and what he's been doing with this. We do not need a full-out origin story. Batman's origin story has been done to death. I don't want to see his parents getting shot in Crime Alley or him falling down a well or him having the Vietnam family flashbacks that we get in every single Batman movie, it seems. The story of Batman has been told a zillion times. We don't need it again. We don't need an origin story. What we do need is a little bit of background on what Bruce Wayne has been up to. Why he retired. And I think you're going to get the majority of that backstory in the rumored 
Batman movie that Ben Affleck is going to be directing and starring in, and it's going to be called The Batman. Um, but you need a little bit of that here in Dawn of Justice, or Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice, I should say. You need a little bit of that there. Superman's origin story and what he's been up to, we already got that in Man of Steel. Man of Steel is canon, which means it's falling in line story-wise with this movie. But for the f So for the first hour, 45 minutes of this movie, I want to see Bruce Wayne only. Maybe a little bit of Superman peppered in there, Clark Kent peppered in there. I want to see what he's been up to. And the tail end of that, then you go into the battle between Zod and all them. You know, the, have the movie open with... Hell, have the movie open with... <laughs> and I know I'm going to piss a lot of Superman fanboys off by saying this, but have the movie open with him snapping Zod's neck again. <laughs> or have, like, you know, a little, bit of, a little bit of flashback as to what happened in Man of Steel. You don't need much. Because this is going to create a whole sense of revenue for that movie. If they're smart, fans are going to want to go back and watch it now. Warner Brothers, if you're listening. But then you go, okay, well, six months before that. Here's what Bruce Wayne was up to. Six months before Superman put on the cape and came out, as it were. <laughs> I know that's going to draw some attention, but anyway. Um, then you have the whole Superman, you know thing with him battling Zod and all that and crushing the Wayne Tower in Metropolis and then you could get into the whole Batman versus Superman thing the other f the, the next 45 minutes of this movie I want to see nothing but Batman versus Superman this whole Justice League crap can take up the last 30 minutes of this movie and I'd be happy 30 to 45 minutes of the movie I'd be happy you don't need a whole lot of it. It's called Dawn of Justice, which means it's just starting to surface. I want the meat of this movie to be Batman vs. Superman. This essentially needs to be a Batman-esque movie. So, that's what I'm hoping they do. I'm going to the midnight release of this movie... I'm going to go Thursday night. I don't have to work the following Friday, so I'll be able to go and see it overnight without having to worry about waking up early the next day. Because, golly, the movie's two hours, almost three hours long. That's that's a long movie. And there's a couple things about that. You know, people, are they going to want to sit through that movie? Yes, I'm sorry. For, despite what people are saying, it's Batman vs. Superman. We've been waiting a lifetime to see these guys on the big screen duking it out. You know, this is a dream match, as it were. <laughs> so the the only downside about the two hour and thirty minute time limit, or two hour and thirty minute runtime time limit, yeah. The following contest is Batman vs Superman. You got a two hour and thirty minute time limit and fight. No. The only problem with the runtime is the fact that the movie theaters can't crank it out as much as they could with a common hour and forty five hour and thirty minute long movie. Unless they put it on multiple screens. Which, come on, guys. This is going to be like Star Wars was. Maybe not to the extent. But it is going to be that heavy. Just about. More people probably like Batman and Superman and all that than they do Star Wars anyway. So, it's, it's just the way it is. But, I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping they don't screw it up. There hasn't been many reviews out there for this thing, and there's not going to be because Warner Brothers is keeping this thing under lock and key as well they should. I hate it when movie critics go, we weren't shown in advanced screening, that's not good. Sure it's good. Why should you be any different than us? Well, because Joe, people read their reviews and they want to hear what they have to say. Well, that's good, but you know what? Not with this case. Not in a movie as epic as this. Not with a movie as epic as this. The inclusion of all these superheroes, this is what I kind of want to talk about here. And a lot of people are going to say, well, Joe, you don't know what you're talking about. This is perfect. But to me, it's not. Um, 
I don't like the Dawn of Justice concept of this. To me, this movie should be Batman v Superman. That's it. No Dawn of Justice. There, I don't even want to see Wonder Woman in this movie, to be honest with you. You got Marvel. And yes, I'm comparing Marvel to DC because Marvel is crushing it. Take a look at the latest Captain America Civil War movie, which or trailer, which is another segment of the show entirely. I'm not going to get into it. But, Marvel, that first Iron Man movie came out in 2008. From 2008 till now, eight, you know, eight years, they've been building and building and building and building slowly by surely. You get your Iron Man, you get your Thor, you get your Captain America movie, you get your Hulk movie, which actually came back out, I think, before Iron Man. It is canon. Although it's not really talked about because it movie didn't do as good. But they built up to the Avengers. They didn't just sit there with the first Iron Man movie go, Okay, here you go. <laughs> no. I think there needs to be a little bit of a slow build here. And I know a lot of people are going, Well, DC's trying to catch up with Marvel. Yes, they are. DC's is, DC is about five years too late on this, folks. Let's be honest. The The whole super bubble, the superhero nerd comic book bubble that we're in right now is probably going to burst before the, the the damn Justice League movie is ever, ever made and put out. So... And I hope it doesn't burst. Honestly, I like where we're at. I'm a nerd at heart. I love this age that we're living in now. Comic books are popular again. Not many people read comic books as much as they do watch these movies. I'm in, included in that. However, Mo DC is about five years too late with this. Immediately after Man of Steel, they should have been going Batman v Superman. Let's go. There should not be any question right now as to whether or not Ben Affleck is recorded is going to be directing and starring in a a standalone Batman movie. That that should have been decided upon halfway through shooting Batman v Superman. The fact is, Warner Brothers is scared shitless about this movie. From what I've read, they're scared that this movie is going to flop. They're scared that this movie is going to suck and crush everything that they're trying to build so far. And if they rush this like they are, yes, that could possibly happen. Let's count them. Let's count them down. You got Batman and Superman in this movie. Two characters. Two heroes. Then you got Wonder Woman coming in. So that's three. Cyborg is supposed to have his origin move story in this movie, so that's four. You got an appearance by The Flash, five. And then we've been knowing for months and months and months that, you know, <laughs> let's throw Aquaman in there too. Six superheroes in one movie. Now, it's okay when you have the Avengers and they built up to it. But like I said, they didn't sit there and do that Iron Man movie with six superheroes thrown in at you. They are they are really really just they're they're, they're quick draw McGrawing this whole thing. They really are. Do I think it's gonna work? Yeah, it's gonna work because you're always gonna have the fanboys like me who are gonna watch your product no matter what they do. You know, just like you got fans out there. Joe, you're not owed. Are we owed a slow build to the super to the DC Cinematic Universe? I think so. Do I think what they're doing is too much too soon? Maybe. Then again, like I said before, they should have started this five years ago. You know? Anyway. It's going to be good no matter what I have a feeling. I, I, I just got to... I... I my biggest fear is that this this Justice League movie that they're going to do is just, you know, you basically got the Justice League in this, and I know that every all these six superheroes, the four of them, you know, Cyborg, Flash, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman, they don't have as prominent of a part in this movie as we think. But they're still there. And you're still throwing a fans a lot. 
Not many people know who Cyborg even is. So. Anyway. We're going to come back and we're going to talk video games here on the podcast. We're going to talk about the Nintendo NX and some of the rumors that have been circulating the last couple of weeks. What I think they should do with the NX. You're listening to New Search Live right here. I miss being able to say it, but I can't. Anyway, you're listening to New Search Live. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be right back. When gamers came along, the planet laughed at us. But this is gaming in the future, and you haven't heard the last of us. Dismissing this is just an enormous fallacy. So open your mind and let it alter your reality. Hey geeks, I bring a message from the future. There's a new revolution headed to computers. It's 73, but it won't be too long till we can get the TV to play a game upon. But it's time to break out of the house. The crazy days of space invaders, awaiters, arcade potatoes. Swap the shooting range for computer games, arcade renaissance, pre 8 bits booming days. A new decade, welcome to the 80s. Pac Man's the latest new craze, Cubits the rage. The first personal computers let loose as manic minor grudge time as the fight is truly useless. Elite games, legion to we little boys, a deep space region. The freedom of choice Now here comes the console The first one so forth Ended an industry Of dimensions untold The birth of franchise Mario Brothers Donkey Kong Monty Mole Italia the others But the list would go on and on Longer than I can tell Until the 90s When the game became handheld Meanwhile I bought stories Of another time And point to click the ride From the shores of Mikey Island Ever wanna see your chums Beat right up Then down your sand You need to try Street Fighter A tournament with all your buddies In your front room It's all good Until you fight online I'm doomed Hijack your mind Your mama can't Nightwrap might lack morals and tomorrow crisis What are we doing to our youth? They're shooting people glued to screens with super glue Computers need to be banned when the laws broke Ban manhunt, ban grand theft auto Try something musical but if you've a sore throat I'll have on your after, a rapper the rapper Tomb Raider, the tune invade your brain Get in away and you'll make it taste the pain A sports a game always in its hard fact And a game became a sport and its name was Starcraft Kids used to play with dolls in a house The Sims is the same but control with a mouse, yeah Open worlds about but ready 3D, hey Until the Elder Scrolls and GTA Wait till you see the scale of the monsters and bosses Let your face and shadow of the colossus Things are getting bigger, more decision, more maps Millions of simultaneous players in Warcraft All the people, so many people See a whole family can get involved and we sports and more people means more money more flair for big blockbusters card mod than warfare even more people more freedom more indie games limbo fez super meat boy brain revolutionizing gameplay and mind blast constructing infinite disruptible worlds minecraft gaming on the telephone yes i know it sounds absurd fruit ninja farmville reverse when gamers came along the planet laughed at us but this is gaming in the future man you haven't heard the last of us dismissing this is just an enormous fallacy to open your mind and let it alter your reality when gamers came along the planet and you haven't heard the last of us Dismissing this is just an enormous fallacy So open your mind and let it go to your reality When games came along the planet laughed at us But this is gaming in the future And you haven't heard the last of us Dismissing this is just an enormous fallacy So open your mind and let it go to your reality When games came along the planet laughed at us But this is gaming in the future And you haven't heard the last of us Dismissing this is just an enormous fallacy So open your mind and let it go to your reality When games came along the planet laughed at us But this is gaming in the future And you haven't heard the last of us Dismissing this is just an enormous to open your mind and let it alter your reality Gamers The world is ours And welcome back guys um, If you're hearing a little bit of background noise Like uh, it's it's raining and I have my window open So I, if you hear the, the smooth sound of a water falling Is uh Is as relaxing as a natural spring <laughs> because it is a uh, it's raining outside my window here um video games golly the nintendo nx there's been a ton of rumors flowing around this um what it's gonna have what it's not gonna have what it's gonna be what it isn't gonna be here's what i want to see out of the nx um i want to see a system they, they say it's gonna be on par with the xbox one just as powerful as the xbox one which is good PlayStation 4 is still a little bit better as far as performance goes and hardware goes, but you can't win it all. Um, but Nintendo has been needing to do this for a while. They've been one step behind ever since the Wii. Hell, one step behind ever since the GameCube, I should say. GameCube came out and 
it was pretty much Nintendo's version of the PS1. There's that rain. Anyway. <laughs> so and and so this needs to be on par with the Xbox One. And it also needs to have third party support. Now those who are not in the know Right now, the only people making video games for Nintendo's Wii U is Nintendo. Nobody else. You won't find Madden on Nintendo. You won't find Call of Duty. You won't find Assassin's Creed. You won't find UFC, WWE 2K. You won't find none of that. Grand Theft Auto. You won't find none of that on a, on a, on a Wii U. And a lot of people think it's because we, the Nintendo is family friendly and doesn't want those types of games on their console, which part of it may be true, but the biggest majority of this is the fact that their hardware is not powerful enough to run those games. So the NX does have to be on par. Big rumor going around that this console is going to be... They started it with the Game Boy D or the Nintendo DS, Game Boy DS, whatever you want to call it, and with the dual screens. And the Wii U had to have two screens now. You have a damn iPad in your hands pretty much. Plus the big screen on the TV. So now there's rumor that they're going to take it up and kick it up a notch. And that they're going to have a portable... You're going to have the standalone system. And then you're going to have a portable system that is just as powerful to go along with it. Which is good. But then you get into the whole deal of then you get into the whole deal of are they going to package this as both the handheld and the you know it's is it going to be both in one or are they going to make you shell out another $300 to get the handheld portion of the system which I hope they do not do Nintendo you, your reputation is bad enough with with the hardcore gaming community Please let it just be an all-in-one. Pa you have low price points as it is, I know. The Wii U was the cheapest out of this generation of consoles. Pop it for $350. Okay? It's $50 less than the other people than, than, than they were at launch. Granted, they've come down $50 on the system. So, all right, I'll say $300, $325. If you really want to make an impact. $300, $325. And you get the handheld and the stand and the uh, set top system. Don't pull. You know, don't don't sit there and do like what so many gaming developers do. Going, oh, okay, well, if you want this edition, it's this much, or this edition is this much. No, give us everything that you say you're gonna. You know, give us everything all in one shot. Have it backwards compatible with the Wii U, so that all these video games that I've bought my son over the last year and a half, two years now, are compatible. And Nintendo has done a good job of doing that because the the Wii U can play Wii games and the Wii can play GameCube games, and that's been great. All the games that I bought on the Wii Virtual Console, I was able to port over to the Wii U. I hope they do the same thing with the NX. Hell, put all. Can you imagine if the NX played Wii and Wii U games? So. Rumors going around about what kind of technology is this thing going to have. There, there's a rumor going around that it's saying that it has the technology where if I'm playing Grand Theft Auto on this thing and I hit a wall, if I keep the joystick mashed into the wall, like if I want to keep steering towards a wall, the joystick is going to give you resistance to where it won't let you, which is awesome in my mind. I like the fact that I could go from playing Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U on my TV to pushing a button and taking the handheld part of me part of it with me down the road to where I could still play let's say here's a good example and this is going to take cell phone gaming which Nintendo is also getting into sorry about that I had to go take care of a family issue <laughs> I, I, I like to be able to let's say I'm playing Mario Kart on let's say I'm playing Mario Kart at home and all of a sudden I look at the clock, it's my day off, and all of a sudden I look at the clock and go, shit. Got an appointment with the car mechanic to go get four four tires put on the car at about an hour. Let me go get ready. So I save the Mario Kart game on the Wii U. 
or the NX, as it's going to be called, excuse me. I could then take the portable version of the NX with me to the mechanic, and while they're changing my tires, pick up where I left off on the exact same game. Imagine that. That would be so awesome. Now, there was rumors that you could do that with the Vita, but the Vita was a lost cause. Nintendo owns the portable market. Now, where this sits, where this may sit roughly with some is that it's another device that you have to carry around with you in comparison to your cell phone or anything like that, and it's going to kill cell phone gaming if this happens. You know, especially if they let third party come in. What if you could do Candy Crush on the Wii, on the NX? You know? Nintendo's been saying they want to get into mobile gaming. Well, here's their chance right here. Um, I, I, I want to see good games for this. I want to see Madden. I want to Imagine if you could, you know, right now the only reason why you would buy a Wii U is so that you could play, like, the new Star Fox, Mario Kart, Mario Maker, which is awesome. Um, right now that's the only reason to buy it, but imagine if you bought a Wii U, and you had Mario and Zelda, which are exclusive to Nintendo. Sonic, which is pretty much exclusive to Nintendo now. Um, imagine if you could play those games. And then Nintendo could tell you, hey, you know those games that you're buying over there on PS3, like Madden and everything like that? You could come play them on our system, too. Wow. Wow. That's, that's pretty big. The only reason why then you have to buy a that you have to buy a PlayStation would be for like The Last of Us Uncharted. Maybe they have Final Fantasy be exclusive to PlayStation, but I doubt that because at E3 last year, um they said it was coming first to PlayStation 4, which I'm excited about. Um but eventually it's going to come to the Nintendo NX2. Um another thing that I would like to see is I would like to see Nintendo have a strict DLC policy. I, I would like to see them fasten down on this whole DLC thing and, and microtransactions bit. Yes, Nintendo has them with their stuff too, but I, 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 don't, I would like to see them have less of it. I don't want Nintendo to have... One thing Nintendo that has been good of is not cheating the fans, it's kind of. Um, so I want that to continue. I want there to be... I want there to be more games coming out. You know, I want to see more Mario, more Zelda. The thing that is really pissing me off about this whole thing with NX being announced is the fact that they're doing just like they did with the Wii and the GameCube with Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess, or, you know, when Zelda Wii U, as it's been called, which we still don't have a tagline for this game. I mean, uh, golly, at E3, there's got to be something to give. And, and I'm going to do preview videos for all three companies leading up to E3, I, I think. Um, especially, maybe not Xbox, because I don't I don't own one. I, I, I have one in my home, but it's not mine. It's my stepson's. So, And I don't touch it. I don't want to touch it. I call it a crap box. It's just... Sorry, but when you get the one thing that really stirred me away from Xbox and the one that made me really decide that PlayStation was king in all this was that when you buy a PlayStation, they give you a charging cable for the controller. When you buy a when you buy a crap box 360, they give you batteries and say, "Here you go, boy." <laughs> If you want a charger, you got to buy it on the side. So, it, to me, something that basic can make or break your console, and for and 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 make you decide which one is which, which one you want to buy. And for me, that was the the thing. Plus the layout of the controller. I'm used to the PlayStation controller. I've been used to the layout of this controller since you know 1998 when I got my PlayStation. Um, Nintendo. I'm kind of used to the Wii U controller. A, B, X, Y, L, R, C. You know, stuff like that. So, I don't. The Xbox controller does not fit comfortable in my hands. I've never been able to get used to it, so I, that's another reason, you know. But we, can, like I said, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do pro at least a one for Nintendo and at least a video for PS4. 
or at least a podcast for both leading up to E3. I mean, we're three months away from E3, guys. Nintendo's really got to step it up for E3. Nintendo's got to come out. I don't want to see a Nintendo Direct with Reggie Felsmay and um, whoever they got to replace Awada. May he rest in peace. I don't want to see Muppets. I don't want to see Robot Chicken. I don't want to see Stop Motion Claymation, whatever. I want to see live press conference with Reggie Felsmay at E3. Call an actual press conference and come out this year guns blazing. If you don't, if this is the year that you are going to announce the NX and have the NX debut, you need to at least make some mention of it. If you're going to have it come out, here, here's the thing, here's the thing. If it's going to come out this year, have a full-blown Who Shot John press conference. If it's going to come out in the holidays of next year, which may not be the smartest of moves, then you could do a Nintendo Direct where it's saying, hey, this is our system. Have Reggie in a video going, here it is, the NX, blah, 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 blah. And show it, you know, show it in action. Actually show it in action. The, the good thing is here, if they do a full-blown Who Shot John press conference at the Nokia Theater or wherever out there in L.A., then you have a chance to show it in action. There's got to be some sort of prototype here that they have to show. At least give us a prototype. At least give us an idea of what we, we're going to be buying. Because I guarantee you, if they announce it, I'm going to come out and say it. If they announce this is coming out holiday of this year, then I already know where three or $400 of my tax money is going next year in January. It's going to go to buy this. I, I'm going to sell off the Wii U. Especially if they make it backwards compatible. I'm going to sell off the Wii U. I'm going to keep all my Wii U games and everything. But I'm going to sell the console off. GameStop's going to make money because they're going to get a money. They're going to get a console from me, and I'm going to use the money that they give me for the Wii U, which I know isn't going to be much. But I'm going to take that money and I'm going to go buy an NX with it. And I kind of like the NX. Keep the NX name for crying out loud. I mean, if you want to, just do not put Wii anywhere near this title of this new system. I don't want it to be called the Wii 2. I don't want it to be called the Wii 3. I don't want Wii anywhere in the title because that's one of the things that crippled the Wii U's sales. People did not realize that it was an entirely new console, so they never bought the thing. They didn't see the need. There's people out there still, to this day, buying Wii U video games, thinking that they could just pop them in their regular Wii and play them. And then they have to take it back to the store and get disappointed. Well, the guy behind the counter didn't tell me. It's not the guy behind the counter to really educate you that this is an entirely new system. Their job is to take your money. Anyway... I think we're going to close it out here. We're going to come back and wrap it up next. You're listening to New Search Live. We'll be right back. Hooey! Cold, ain't it, Bert? Have you had your coffee yet? I'll tell you that convenient has got some coffee. I've got to have my convenient coffee every morning. It's so hot and black and rich and good. That freshly brewed convenient coffee every morning gets me moving. I'm moving, 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 moving. In my convenient cup. I'm moving, 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 moving. I think I'll have a donut. So there you have it, folks. Welcome back. Thank you uh, for tuning in today or tonight, whenever you may be listening to this. Are we owed has been the theme of this uh, podcast or YouTube video, however you're choosing to listen to my voice, which I really do thank you guys for listening and watching. Are we owed? A good wrestling product because we plunked down our money. Are we owed a good Batman vs. Superman movie? Again, because we've been plunking down our money and clamoring for this for years. And we're so, so passionate about this fandom. And are we owed a good video game system, fellow nerds? Are we owed, finally, a good video game system from Nintendo? Whose last, let's face it, their last great system was the N64, the Nintendo 64. And even that ended up getting trumped by the PlayStation. I dare say the Dreamcast, because yes, Dreamcast, while I never really... I never really got the chance to play the Dreamcast, but it was a damn good system. Misadmanaged company, damn good system. But are we owed good video game system product from Nintendo this year or next year, whenever they decide to release this? 
I think we are owed these three things, if you're into those three things, whatever your cup of tea is, as they say. I think you're owed a damn good wrestling product on Monday nights. I think we're owed a good Batman vs. Superman movie. I think we're owed a damn good video game system. So that's it for this week. Let me know what you think in the comments below, whether you're listening to this on my Spreaker page, or whether or not you're listening to this on um, YouTube. Feel free to hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash newsearchlive. You can hit me up on Twitter, the old tweet tweet bird. Twitter.com slash wrestling truck or at wrestling truck. YouTube.com slash tons of fun WWE is where you can find me. This is Joe White, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you down the road.